All right, welcome everybody to the team call today. I'm super excited. Uh, we have a special guest on today. I'll give him a proper announcement in just a second. Sometimes I get lengthy on these announcements. We're going to do them real short today so we can get right to Gabe and his story in a little Q&A with him. Uh, but the things to keep on your radar and think about is we have coming up uh, in April, we have our Super Weekend event, which is um, a quarterly event in a city or town near you. I'll be traveling to Salt Lake City uh, with Sagi Kalev from the creator of Body Beast. So we'll be there. Um, also uh, on the radar, kind of planning, thinking about maybe doing a little team get together of some sort based around that event as well. For those of you that want to travel and see Sagi. Uh, number two, we have our coach uh, annual summit where 25,000 of us are going to be together uh, in Indianapolis, and that will be in July. So be thinking about that. And then the last thing is it's Team Cup Month. If you're on a Team Cup team, it's a month to just work together with four other members of your team and, and do the best that you can. And remember that what we do is always based around um, making sure that we are working hard to end the trend of obesity. Uh, first, starting with ourselves inside of our families and being that example to other people. So um, I'm going to introduce Gabe now. Uh, first and foremost, Gabe, this is some of our team that could be on live today. We're Dynasty Strong. We empower others to continually develop into their fullest potential, uh, working on ending the trend of obesity and creating the most sustainable and reliable source of income from the home. And I was, uh, I was talking to Gabe before this, but I'm going to just say this out loud for everybody on here. When I think about our mission, empowering others to continually develop into their fullest potential. The first time I ever saw Gabe's video, I was like, this guy is strong. This is an example of overcoming obstacles and truly growing into his fullest potential and striving to continually do that. So uh, just a little background story on Gabe. Uh, Gabe was born in Brazil with what's called Hanhart syndrome. It's a rare medical condition. Uh, char typically characterized by uh, underdeveloped limbs, mouth, and jaw. Uh, you guys will get to see him on here today. He was born without arms and legs, and he was abandoned at birth, but adopted by an amazing family in Utah, and he has 13 siblings. So he grew up with 13 siblings, and he, um, you guys, well, if you haven't watched the video, you'll have to watch it later. He talks about them and, and what they did for him, and you'll probably be able to hear some of that today as well. But he just recently moved out or moved away from his family. Uh, he's with one of his brothers now. Uh, and he has, uh, here's some of the things he does. He's a break dancer, which is absolutely awesome. He's a public speaker. He's been doing that for about four years. I was just talking with him uh, before you guys hopped on. His largest speaking event was for 10,000 people. So he's not afraid to share his story in front of people and get out there. And like I said, when I think about someone that's growing in their fullest potential, I look at Gabe and I find a lot of power in that. Um, I'm, I've been spending the last four days uh, at home alone with my five kids without my wife's help. And the minute I start to think like, I start to think this is hard. I'm like, man, Gabe, Gabe, what would Gabe say? <laughs> Gabe would be like, that's easy, man. You can do that. So um, he just empowers me to, to find my inner strength in everything that I'm doing. So I'm super excited that he's on today. So uh, with that being said, Gabe, you are unmuted. We're going to let Gabe share a little bit of his story, some things he wants to share with you guys. And then I have a list of questions that we gathered in our team page. And if you guys think of any questions while he is sharing, please feel free to just type them in the chat box and we'll ask him at the end. So Gabe, the floor is all yours, man. Okay. Hi, everybody. So I'm so excited to be doing this. This is my first webinar that I've ever done. So you guys are getting the whole raw deal. Normally there is a podium in front of me, I have a mic, I am having a PowerPoint behind me, and I'm doing a dance for you guys. So we're in my bedroom today, so we're getting real casual and real raw here. So I'm just so excited to be here, and I just want to start off by sharing my story with you guys of rising up in my life and everything that I've had to overcome to get to where I am today. And... So as Scott has stated, I have Pan Heart Syndrome, which does affect less than one in one million people here in the United States. And some of the common signs are missing fingers or toes or malformed jaw or no arms and no legs. And currently that is my situation. And um, I've just been taught never to let that get the best of me. But also when I was born, I was born with severe hearing loss and short-term memory loss. What was I saying again? Just kidding. <laughs> Definitely remember. 
but I was born in Sao Paulo, Brazil, and abandoned in the hospital with little hope for any kind of future. The caretakers did not think that I'd be able to survive. They didn't think that I'd be able to become independent and do things on my own, like dress myself, feed myself, go to school, get an education, graduate, become a motivational speaker, become a dancer, do all these crazy things. I don't really know what all they did think about me, but what I do know is that it doesn't matter what people think. It only matters what you think. It doesn't matter where you're from, what you look like, where you're born, where you started. All that matters is what you decide. Um, when people look at me, they think that I am disabled, but I think I'm perfectly enabled. Some also think of me as deformed, but I think I'm beautifully preformed. Some think I'm different, but I think I'm unique and special. Some see me as odd or even weird. If anything, you guys are all the weird ones. But I know that I'm loved, gifted, talented, and able to do all things God sees fit for me to do in my own life. Truth is, only one thing matters, and that is what you decide. Um, I think my next point would be learning how to do things. Um, when I first started to learn how to walk, it took me three whole years. First, I had to learn how to balance myself. So I went to a place called Shriners Hospital in Salt Lake City, where they would put me on a board that was held up by four ropes, and they would push it like a swing. And I'd have to get my balance so I didn't fall over. And then since I have nine brothers, and some of them are skateboarders, I'd go home and I'd have to walk up and down my skate ramps to get even more practice. And then um, I didn't even learn how to rock myself up from the ground until I was in the seventh grade. Before then, I was climbing up on furniture or on walls, but when you're 20 years old, it's not that cute. No, I said, no. <laughs> so I finally learned how to rock myself up. And then um, I wanted to learn how to swim. And so when I was younger, that also took a whole another two years and none of that would have been possible without my dad. And so first thing I had to overcome was my intense fear of water. Could you imagine getting in the water without one of legs? What do you do? And so I had to learn how that was gonna work. And then the second thing I had to learn was how much air I needed in my lungs to stay afloat. So there were lots of times that I just jumped into the water thinking that I'd be perfectly fine and I was wrong. So I'd jump in the water and I'd sink all the way to the bottom and I'd be looking up at my dad and he'd be looking down at me and be like, Mm -hmm. And then he finally picked me up, and what after felt like minutes was really seconds. He picked me up and said, Gabe, you cannot jump into the water without knowing how much air you need in your lungs to stay afloat. And then I had to learn how to propel myself in the water so I could actually travel. So when I was younger, I used to swim like a dolphin up and down. But once I got into junior high and high school, if I'm going to the pool with friends, how am I supposed to hear them when my head's underwater? So I came up with the idea of just bobbing up and down. So then my head's up out of water and I can see where I'm going and I can hear everybody around me. So my family always plays the joke, what do you call a boy without arms and legs in the water? Bob. <laughs> um, over the years, I had learned some pretty hard things. And I think the three things that really stick out to me are, number one, you could let it define you. You could give up from it, blame others. Or number two, you could let it derail you. Or number three, you could let it strengthen you, grow from it, learn from it, and become better from it. Lots of times in my life, I've had to try, fail, try, fail, and try again. Some things come with lots of tears, sweats, and struggles, but sometimes tears help us gain a new perspective in life and help us move forward. Dressing myself is still a huge challenge. I bet none of you guys have tried dressing yourself with a stick in your mouth because that's whack but that is something that I have to do so I can be independent in the bathroom. And there is a video on that on YouTube. And one of my favorite things to share about that is I do have a YouTube channel. And I started that YouTube channel because out in public, I get asked on the daily, how do you do this? How do you do that? And I don't want to sit there for 30 minutes explaining how I do it. So I'm like, let's just send them to a YouTube channel, like that subscribe button, and yeah. So, on that YouTube channel, I show how I shave my face, how I dress myself, and stuff like that. And when I was filming the video on how I get dressed, um, I was wearing two pairs of pants, and in the end of the video, I was wearing no pants. Did that video get uploaded? No. Why? Because my mom and my grandma both watch those videos. So definitely have to scratch that. I'm going to do it. 
Um, there are lots of people in life who will tell you that you can't, whether that's in losing weight or becoming independent or doing multiple things in your life that you want to do to make yourself better. But my response is simple. Watch me. I am independent and I don't let anybody tell me otherwise. If they say I can't, my biggest thing to do is show them that I can. I've even learned to play football with my brothers, but the only problem is they make me read the ball. All kidding aside, John Gordon once said, don't let what you can't do interfere with what you can do. People have often asked me what's my most difficult challenge in life, and that's ridicule. All my life, I've had to hear the mean things people have said about me behind my back. As a young boy, it was relentless. Everywhere I went, I was the point of everybody's stare. How do you choose someone to find value within themselves when they're so much different than everyone else around them? To make matters worse, I was independent on those people around me when what I really wanted to be was independent and do things on my own. Pretty soon, I started to feel imprisoned in my own life. And I'm pretty sure a lot of you guys have asked yourself why I'm in these situations. I wish my life was different. And if so, I want to share with you what I've learned. Number one, you do not have to be perfect. We are all perfectly imperfect, and our imperfections are what teach us the most in life. Number two, you cannot find your greatest gifts without facing your greatest challenges. What's my greatest gift? I have empathy for others. I know it's like to hurt. As a result, I'm a good true friend. I'm thankful for that gift. And number three, you can do more than you ever thought was possible. Today, I still hear the whispers. Nowadays, it's he's amazing. I wish I had his courage, and I'd like to get to know him. I have the quote that says, I am strong because I've been weak. I am fearless because I've been afraid. And I am wise because I've been foolish. Normally in my presentations, I will play the song Decline because I just feel like that relates so well to my whole message and everything like that. But in the song, it just says, there's always going to be another mountain. I'm always going to want to make it move. And I just feel like that is so true in life. Back in... Um, Junior high, I was bullied out of my school and my parents put me into a charter school. And in that charter school, the logo was a V and it was two people climbing the V. So I've always thought back to that and nobody climbs a mountain alone. You're always supposed to have help. So whether that is physical help, mental help, or spiritual help, it's always provided. You just need to be the one that goes and seeks it. Um, if you've ever looked at me, the first thought that comes to your mind is not, he's a dancer, but if you guess that, I'll definitely give it to you. But I've always loved the beauty of dance, and to see how experts use it is so amazing to me. Perhaps because it's so opposite of what I should be able to do is why I wanted to learn how to dance and dance well. So I first started to dance in the seventh grade, and it was for a talent show, and I didn't tell anybody in my family that I was trying out. And I came home after I finished my audition, and I told my family, I said, I tried out for the talent show said, what did you do? I said, I danced. No, really, what did you do? I danced. Can we see it? Yes. So I show them the dance, and they are completely silent. Not a good silence. My mom finally breaks the silence, and she says, uh, it could use a little bit of work. Luckily, my mom could say that because she was on the drill team back in high school. So she helped me perfect the dance and get it with the beat and everything. And I look back on that dance and I definitely still cringe on it because it definitely was not perfect. But it was my first performance really. So I got a huge standing ovation from everybody in the gymnasium. And that was a huge eye-opening moment for myself and my classmates that I was no longer just the boy in the wheelchair. I could push myself to do hard things, things that I didn't even think that I could physically do. And then I got into high school. And when you sit in a wheelchair all day, it's not that comfy. Other people would say that you got a cushion seat. No, it's not that cushioned after six hours in school. So I got myself into a dance class for my fourth period of school. And um, I was taking the class and I had a friend come up to me saying, you should be on the dance company team. And I was like, no, I'm okay. And she's like, no, really, you should be on the team. And I'm like, no, really, I'm okay. And she's like, well, let's go talk to the coach about it. Went and talked to the coach, and then the next day I find myself getting ready for auditions. And if you've ever been to an audition, you're supposed to be at least 10 to 15 minutes early. I was 30 minutes late. Why? Because I've got a brand new electric wheelchair, and they gave it to me dead. So I had to run home, plug in the wheelchair, and let it charge for at least 30 minutes. 
And then I get to the school and I drop my phone into the wheelchair, into the motor, and it gets caught into the wheel and snaps the screen. Did I care? No, I had to keep going. So I get into the, the audition room and I come in the door and they say, Gabe, you're in the front of the line in the first group. Huh? Okay. So I take my place and the judges say, Kate answers, remember, point your toes and do full out extensions. I don't know what I'm pointing. <laughs> so I say, great. I don't even know if I'm in the right room. And cue the music. Music begins. I do not know the choreography. So I just stand there. And I look over here. She's really good. I look over there. She's really good. Look behind me. She is way good. So I spin it. Yay. I can do that. So I hurry and go spin. Yay. Spin is done. Music's done. I run out the door and I go home and I tell my mom, I am not going to finish auditions. She sits me down and says, Gabe, no, you are going to finish what you started, no matter what happens. So I say, okay. Next day, I'm in the halls and I hear two girls saying, they're only going to put him on the team because he's handy out. That crushed me. No way in heck did I want people to feel sorry for me, especially when I was doing something that I wanted to do so bad. So I went straight to the coach the next day with my mom and I said, please do not put me on your team because you feel sorry for me. She looked me in the eye and said, I would not put you or anybody else on the team because I felt sorry for them. If you get a spot on the team, it's because you'll work hard to keep it and you'll deserve it. Working hard is something I know well. Strength doesn't come from what you thought you can't do. It comes from what you thought you can't do, but decide to do it anyways. So I went to work and I ended up making both Desert Hills Dance Company team and Dave's High Dance Company teams. And my senior year, I was able to take one of my dances to state and I would have taken first place, but I got dropped and the judges definitely realized that. So it bumped us down to second place, but it was just an amazing experience to even get that far with the dance that I choreographed and everything. And that whole dance message was, we all have disabilities, whether we want to admit it or not, whether it's physical, mentally, emotionally, it's there. And whether we choose to show it or not, they are there. And I just feel like so many times in today's society, we try and push away anything that's wrong with us so we can all be perfect but none of us are perfect and i think that's the beauty in life is that we all got something we can work on to be better in whether it's with our physical shape or our mental health or anything like that we can always make it better and try and make it better for those around us and if i had one message to leave with you guys today it would be decide to dance if you're facing something impossible decide to dance if you're worried about how you'll be like that if you choose a certain career or a new dieting plan or a new workout plan, decide to dance. And when you're facing something difficult, whisper to yourself, it's time to dance. Um, I hope you'll remember it. And it's a metaphor for bringing your biggest self to your boldest challenges. It needs to try. So what if you fail? Try anyways. There's a scripture that says to everything there is a season, a time to every purpose under heaven, a time to be born, a time to heal, a time to love, a time to leap, a time to laugh, and a time to dance. God wants us all to dance. I know that you can all rise above anything. You guys are all strong enough, tough enough, brave enough. And if I can dance, so can you. I am grateful for the gifts that God has given me. And no, I do not know what it's like to bend my knees or to lift a freaking weight or anything like that, but I do know what it's like to love another person, to pray for help, to really dance, and leave behind a long list of excuses that follow. It's the challenges that you face that give your efforts the most meaning in life. Be grateful for them and put your fears behind you and your dreams in front of you and you'll become what you are intended to become. I want to thank you guys so much for giving me the opportunity to talk to you. I'm so excited to do these questions now. Awesome, Gabe. I, I don't know why you had to leave us with so much power. I'm like in tears now. I almost can't. <laughs> man i just thank you so much for sharing that i i of course. have to go back and listen to that and write down some of those quotes that you shared but uh i'm gonna when i share this video it's like i'm gonna just go to the team i'm like it's time to dance guys <laughs> so we're gonna use we're, that hashtag we're gonna make that famous because of gabe Please so, do. <laughs> let's go through these questions man uh i feel like we got all of the value that every single one of us needed to hear already but let's go through these questions uh, because they were asked. The first one is, what is your why? As you've accomplished and overcome so much already, so what, what's your why in driving force today? I think my why would be 
I want to be something bigger than I am right now. I want to be somebody that somebody looks up to. I want to be the reason that somebody smiles, whether that's with my actions or with my words. And I just want to be remembered when I'm gone. And it's just like that Beyonce song, I was here. And that's just what I want to be played at my funeral for sure, because I definitely want to leave an impression on this world and make a change for the better. I love that. This is this is kind of crazy, Gabe. I have to tell you this. I'll show it to you later. The first okay. transformation video I ever made when I first started like my health and fitness journey has that song as the background. No way. I was yeah, I was here. That's crazy. That's funny. That's kind of funny how that that works out. <laughs> um, so the next question was: Having smashed so many barriers already, which is amazing. What's your ultimate goal and aspirations for your future? So it kind of aligns with what we just talked about, but what are some of your other aspirations? For sure. Well, one of my biggest goals so far was to move out and be on my own. I've worked so hard in my independence to get to where I am today. And I was, um, it was right before I was 20 years old, I told myself um, that I wanted to move out before I turned 20. So I was heading back from a speaking engagement back to St. George to my parents' house. And I just randomly texted my mom and I said, I'm moving out. And she texted me back and she said, no freaking way. I think this is going to be a great opportunity for you. And I remember how excited I was when I moved out for a while. I'm just so excited about how far you've come. And I can't wait. My dad, on the other hand, had a super hard time with it because he was my manager for three years. And so we built a really close bond together. And so when I said that, he kind of got bummed out that I was moving away and taking his job from me that was my flat. But he's been super supportive as well on this whole moving out situation. And I think as of for now, my biggest goal would be to continue learning lessons. I don't look at my mistakes as mistakes. I was taught that mistakes are lessons in life. And you can always learn from them and grow from them. And I had a little bit of a bit with my roommates because I was living with roommates and it just was not working out. So I told myself, you know, I need to get out of this situation so I can keep moving forward in my life and being happy. And that's exactly what I did. And one of the biggest things that I've taught myself is to never let situations come to you. Always chase your situations and get to what you want out of life and stuff like that. Awesome. I love that. Um, okay. The next question is, okay, this is a little bit different. Could society do a certain thing to help the few people in the world with obstacles like you've had? Is there something that, that people can do? I think society just needs to be more open-minded to people who are different because in reality, we're all different, just like I stated. And it's sad to think that one person could a job because it looks like they have more ability than the other person, but in reality, you just need to give the person a chance and see what they can actually do because in the end, it might shock you. And my senior year, I was a peer tutor for the special needs kids. I had the opportunity to graduate early, but I have a brother who's the same age as me. And I always had a dream that we'd graduate together and do that whole ceremony and stuff together. So I said, you know what, I'll just take three peer tutor classes and watch these kids and stuff like that. And over the year, I just learned that they are just like everybody else and they want to be treated just like everybody else. And once you give them that chance, it's amazing what they can do and what they can show you. And I didn't feel like I was their teacher, they were definitely my teacher that year for the whole year. I love it. Thank you. Um, another one, as a gent, those one I'm guessing comes from the UK, who is clearly mentally and physically strong. <laughs> I can tell whose it is now by the smile on the, in, <laughs> from Mandy. Uh, as a gent who clearly is mentally and physically strong, what nugget of advice would you give to individuals having a self-belief crisis or challenges they feel that they can't do it like whatever it is they're going after well i will be the first to admit that i am definitely not perfect and i definitely have my down days just like anybody else and one of the biggest things that i try to do to uplift myself is listen to a positive song or look up quotes or watch a positive video or go out of my way to do something else for somebody else because that makes me happy or one of the things that my parents taught me when i was younger because i definitely had a problem with self-image was to stand in the mirror and look at myself and give myself 10 compliments. And then throughout the day, I had to find 10 other people and give them a compliment about their physical appearance and something like that. 
I love that. I know you couldn't see it, but I was, we were chatting in the chat box while you were sharing your story. And I was like, man, I, I love Gabe's mom and dad. So many, so many awesome things uh, that they've taught, taught you in your life that you're now teaching to us. So you have to let them know that we thank them as well. Of course. I for sure. Um, so who, next question is who inspires you, Gabe? Um, it's a super cliche, but my family actually inspires me. Since there's 14 of us all together, they've all gone through their own battles and just being able to sit front row seat, sometimes eat popcorn and laugh at them or have a tissue nearby so I can wipe my tears and wipe their tears and just watch them get back in life and keep going has been my real motivation and stuff like that. I love that. My wife's going to love that answer. That's her answer for everything is my family. So... <laughs> Um, okay, next one. What we kind of talked about this. Um, we talked about. Uh, let's get more specific with it. What are your next two top goals? Like some specific goals that you want to accomplish, and what are you afraid of? Um, I think my next two top goals would be I'm going to California in July for a big dance con event, and while I'm there, I went there last year for my first time to see the ocean. And I think my next goal is to possibly learn how to surf in the seven days while I'm there because I really, really want to learn how to surf. Cool. And my other goal would be to learn how to drive. That is my number one goal. I really, really, really want to learn how to drive and be a driver. I've always loved cars. And my biggest dream is to own a Tesla so I don't have to worry at all. But if we're being realistic, I definitely have thought of other ways to drive. And there's a website called Freedom Motors that decks out cars for people in wheelchairs where they can just drive their wheelchairs straight up into the car and drive from their seat and everything like that. So awesome. that's definitely my next goal. And I think one of the things I'm afraid of is snakes. I hate snakes with a passion. <laughs> I'm with you on that, man. I like that you're, the thing you're afraid of is like, like an animal. It's not like, obviously we've seen through your life, it's not failure or any of these other things because you've faced those from time, you know, throughout your entire life. Uh, but snakes, I don't think I can encounter them a million times and still be afraid of them too. So <laughs> I'm with you there. I don't even look at them if they're on a TV screen or anything like that. <laughs> uh, me neither, man. That's the one thing when I was a little kid that I'd go to my parents' room with a bad dream is when there were snakes all over the floor. It's yeah. the only bad dream I ever really had. <laughs> okay, um, such an inspirational man. Question. How do you deal with bullies that you encounter? Um, one of the things that I was always taught is that if somebody's picking on you, it's because they've got something going on in their own life. And so you get to choose on how that affects you. And if it affects you, then that's on you. But you can also turn it around and see what's going on with them and see if they need help in their own life to get better. I love that. Uh, next question. I know uh, that in the video, you said that you choose not to let it affect you. Um, oh, we already talked. That goes back to the goal. So we'll skip over that one. It goes, says the top goal. Okay. So when, when, peop, when you tried out for the dance team and heard people gossiping or talking about you how, do you, how did you handle that situation and how do you continue to handle situations like that? Um, I was pretty distraught when I first heard it. I was like, are you kidding me? Why are people even saying this? Why is this a thing? Why does it matter? And then it kind of like psyched me out, like, should I even try out? Because then they're going to think that I'm just their charity case or something like that. Yeah. And then I had to go and get advice from my parents and my little cousin. She's a little dancer as well. So I took advice from her as well. And they really motivated me to keep pursuing this dance company dream and not listen to what other people had to say if it was negative and just push through them. Yeah, I love that. Um, so I have a question. Um, okay, we're done with that list of questions. If anybody else has a question, as I asked this last question, please type it um, before you lose your opportunity. Uh, but my question for you is, uh, and I'll give a, a quick backstory on it. So uh, our job is what we do as coaches is we find people that need help with their health and fitness uh, or their nutrition, and we offer them a solution, which would be home workouts or following a meal plan or some sort of cleanse or the mindset behind why they're um, overeating and whatnot. And we have tools that we can give them 
or sell them, right? So we sell it to them and then our job is to help them use the tools and get results. So most of the people on this call are, are somebody that has had that happen to them already. They're using one of the products, they're in love with the product, their life is transformed, and now they wanna pay that forward and do that for other people. So these are coaches, most, most people on the call. And so their, their job now is to get themselves out, get their story out there, how, how their life is transformed, a struggle they've been through, how they're overcoming that struggle. So they got to get out there and they got to invite other people to, to buy a product from them, to join their team or whatever. And a lot of people I see, because I mentor people through this, is they're afraid of what somebody will think about them because they're trying to sell something or they don't want to be an icky salesperson. So what would you say to somebody that's having trouble getting themselves out there? Cause, cause my job is, our job is so simple. It's like, just share your life. You connect with somebody cause you have something in common and then you help them. That's it. But, but so many people are afraid to do that because they're afraid of what people will think. So what advice in that context would you give to somebody that's having trouble getting themselves out there? Well, I can definitely relate to that, especially right now with all this media spotlight stuff that's been going on. I've had a few celebrities reach out to me, and then I go back and I tell my parents, like, this is so crazy. Why are they reaching out to me? I feel like I'm a little fish, and they're the big fish. And everybody relates me to Nick Vujicic, and I've met him a few times, and he's a super awesome guy, and he gave me a shout out the other week. And I've been looking for a speaking agency that can help manage my career and get me more speaking engagements and stuff like that. So I came early on this to be my actual career and source of income. So I was talking to my mom yesterday on the phone and I just said, I don't think that I can reach out to him because I've already tried and nothing ever happens from it. And I'm afraid that I just seem weird when I reach out to him. Blah, blah, blah. She's like, no, you need to go after what you need. You need to not be scared of what the outcome is going to be, whether it's good or bad. Just go get it and you can learn whether it's good or bad and just go with it. So my biggest thing that I would tell anybody who's struggling with that is just be yourself during the process. And if it's a no, then that's okay. It's probably for a reason. But if it's a yes, then run with it and be happy that you got the opportunity. I love that. Thank you, Gabe. Um, so we're going to let you go, Gabe. But to close this out, um, the chat thread has been awesome. Um, stuff like Gabe you're so inspiring I'm sure you will be driving and learning to surf in no time so just as much uh, you poured a lot of belief into to us and what's possible for our lives we as well want you to know that we we see you surfing one day we see you driving one day and and I know you're gonna you're gonna kill it in the speaking career and, and have all of the gauge, engagements that you could ever imagine so uh, I believe that's possible for you uh, can't wait to meet you in person one day when we go down to Salt Lake City and sure. we're just so grateful that you spent time with us today and uh everybody on the call uh if you have somebody that you know could be inspired or would be inspired by this please share the recording with them and uh, let's get gabe's story out there even more I, I don't think it needs to be much more he's got like 87 million views or something now in that one video <laughs> but uh i think what we learned today will help empower a lot of people out there to live their best self uh just just like gabe is doing and Gabe, I love that you just shared how real you are, uh, that you face you know, some of the mental struggles that even some of us are facing, even though you've come so far already. So thank you for being vulnerable with us and real with us. Of course. And bringing your best self today. Of course, thank you. Okay, awesome guys. Uh, thank you for being on Live with a Call. I'll post this recording up and then we'll see you guys next Wednesday. All right, thanks again, Gabe. You too, bye. See you guys.